Sheffield's entry pass intended for Caleb. Tier won't find the range. Well, that was a turnover that time by the Yellow Jackets, but they're always looking down inside for that guy cutting. And there's a turnover. Sailor throws it into the hands of Joe Stewart. Pass to Stewart, taken away by Deaton. Deaton quickly crosses the timeline, gives it up to Mock. 17-footer, won't go, misses everything. And the rebound by Duesenberry, who looks to have taken an awkward fall as he's a bit slow to get up. Now he's six foot four, that's a long ways to fall, but Duesenberry stays in this game. There you see the replay. Duesenberry hustling after it, falls out of bounds, but he had his right foot on that inline. That'll give the Warriors the ball back. Caleb Tier goes out and into the game for the first time is Drew Cheek, Matt Castos. Jump shot won't fall. Rebound taken down by Ficoat. He's going to be fouled by Kevin Phipps. We'll take the long walk to the other end as now Chris with 2:10 left to go in this ball game. I think that uh, Mount Vernon coach Kurt Kaufman may go out and get the bus driver to play. They have played everybody off that bench tonight and then some. Free throw by Fico won't go. It's tipped up and in. We'll see what happens. Looks like it may go against Drew Cheek. They wave off the bucket. No, it's going to go against Matt Duesenberry. His second. Sailor gives up to Deaton. Phipps, top of the key, lobs it down low for Thomas, and it's taken away there by... Duesenberry. Sheffield quickly gets to the top of the key and backs it out. Gives it up to Duesenberry across the cheek. You know, one of the things, too, uh, Chris, we need to mention, this is a fourth game in eight days for Mount Vernon, so they have uh, really played a lot, a lot of basketball here in these uh, last eight days. Yeah, well, and you'll have that heading into the break and coming out of the break as teams... You know, with a week or so off, 10 days, they'll play a bunch in, uh, right before the break, and then they'll play a bunch in January as well. Well, they made up that Lexington game that they had to, uh, well, they couldn't play because of the power outage. As you see, number 52 there, Ficote hits his first point of the ball game, and then they came back and played that on the 16th of December, so that kind of added to the uh, busy schedule. Ficote for the second of two, Bill Ben Severns into the game as Ficote misses. Phipps rebounds for the Warriors. 1.30 to play. Deaton goes down the lane, gives it off to Sailor. Three ball in the corner, air ball. Rebound by Severns. He gives it up to Ficote. Ficote has it tipped away by Thomas. It'll stay Jackets ball. Good hustle by Thomas that time as he got the ball knocked out of bounds. It gives the Warriors time to get set now and play some defense with 1.18 left. See some of the freshmen and JV scurrying to the locker room yeah. to get their gear. Yes. They don't want to be there for the post-game chat, I'm sure, that the varsity may have in the Watkins locker room. Minute 10 left in this fiasco, 71-42. Severns down the lane, has it stripped away by Deaton. Deaton quickly heads the other direction, gives it up to Saylor. Sailor spins, gives it off to Casto. Three ball from the corner, back iron won't go. Josh Thomas chases down the loose ball. He pump fakes, gives it up to Phipps. Phipps from the foul line, throws it out of bounds. Nobody home that time as Phipps turned and just fired it to, uh, I think, the, uh, the lady there in the first row. This is just ugly. Now 21 turnovers for the Warriors. And it is Warriors. what it is. I yep. don't mean to be critical, but. Sheffield across the timeline, gives it up to Stewart. Stewart hands it off to Sheffield. Sheffield to Severn. Severns has it tipped away by Sailor. It's a foot race. Sailor looks to go to the bucket. Oh, and he has it blocked by Sheffield, but he does draw the foul. So Greg Sailor will go to the line and shoot a pair. 
Here you see it on replay. They got Greg listed at 5'8", and Sheffield, of course, at 5'10". I'd like to take a tape measure to Mr. Saylor. You get everything he's got, but I'd be surprised if he comes up at 5'8". He's not very tall. Now well, he got a free throw to go down. So he gets his name in the paper. Makes the second. Now the Warriors are four out of four from the free throw line here in this fourth quarter. Nine out of 12 in the ball game. So they've had a pretty good evening from the uh, stripe if you're looking for something positive. Now if they were 29 for 32, it might that have been be a better. game. <laughs> 10 seconds, Sheffield gives off the fight coat. He'll hold it in the corner and kick it back out to Severns. As the clock ticks down to zero, final score here tonight in a route, 71-44. And Mount Vernon comes away with uh, an easy win here tonight at Watkins Memorial. We'll be back after this timeout for some post-game stats, folks. Don't go away. Welcome back to the post game and welcome back. Welcome back to Watkins Memorial High School where Mount Vernon came in and coasted out of here with a 71-44 win, a gift wrapped win if you will. The turnovers just killed the Warriors. Um, I don't know if they hit the 20 mark or not, but I mean, there, those 20 turnovers, it would be interesting to find out how many points Mount Vernon was able to convert off of that because they ran a masterful offense, the high post and just the backdoor cuts, the scissors cuts, and they just ran it to near perfection. I'll bet their shooting percentage was phenomenal because they made as many layups, and they really got their run. The game was close early, but Mount Vernon was able to gain separation with the three ball early, and then they just went to the disciplined offense and using the back door cuts and whatnot so that uh, to put this one well in hand by 27 points here as we enter the break. Mount Vernon picks up their second win of the season. Watkins Memorial falls to two and five overall. But for the uh, Warriors here at home, they were led by uh, Richie Malk, who really lit things up for 10 points in that last quarter for the Watkins team. Uh, ben Adams had six, Rakeem Hall had seven, Casey Weber five, Jason Warrington, five. Uh, they had three trays in the ball game. Nine out of 12, finally, from the stripe uh, for the Warriors and 21 turnovers for visiting Mount Vernon. They were led by Richie Ruckard, 16 points. He had most of those in that first half. 13 for Tony Tear, 11 for Kyle Kling Klingdienst. So they had three players in double figures. Nine players scored in all. Seven trays in the ball game for the uh, Mount Vernon Yellow Jackets, 15 out of 24 from the free throw line, and they had 10 free throws. So uh, right now, both teams go into their Christmas break. The Warriors, as we mentioned, will play at Licking Heights January 2nd, and then the Yellow Jackets come back on the 29th in their home against Riverview. But uh, uh, Chris, I was impressed tonight with this uh, Mount Vernon team. I think they'll win more ball games down the road for sure. Didn't look like a one and four ball club tonight. They come out of here with their second week win of the season and well on their way to a, a little bit more joyous holiday, I suppose, than the Warriors will enjoy. I want to thank, while I can, Steve Hall, Bob Gooden on the cameras, Ed Jobes, Derek Barkley, and Jim Kramer in the truck. And I want to thank my partner, Doug Evans, for all his cogent commentary. And to you at home, I hope you enjoyed the game. It may have been a little tough tonight, but I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, the best of health, and a happy holiday. Good night, everybody.
We are officially at the mid-season point of the 2006-2007 basketball season. Tonight we come to you from Watkins Memorial High School where the Warriors play host to Buckeye Valley. The Warriors enter the game under the tutelage of Todd Phillips, first year coach for Watkins with a two and seven record. This is a non-league contest and the guests tonight from Buckeye Valley are coached by Donovan Barrett. The Barons are a member of the Mid-Ohio Athletic Conference and they sport an eight and one mark. I'm Chris Weber joined tonight by Jerry Wheeler and Jerry on paper looks like it might be a mismatch eight and one two and seven. They've got one common opponent and it didn't go well uh, in terms of that comparison when you figure Olentangy uh, was beaten by Buckeye Valley by 20 and Watkins got him by six. We'll be back after the national anthem to talk about the matchup right after this timeout. One of these <clears throat> to be the most dangerous tools you can own because if you're careless, even for a minute, this can come into contact with those. Then it's lights out. At the Energy Cooperative, nothing is more important than the safety of our members. We can't do it all. The best way to be safe around outdoor power lines, just don't touch them, ever. The first rule of every do-it-yourselfer should be do it safely. Remax Edge is proud to be a sponsor of Licking County's high school sports. So remember, if you are buying or selling property, give Remax Edge a call today. That's Remax Edge, selling homes for you. Call 928-3343 or 928-EDGE. Since ancient times, Tile has been celebrated for its beauty and durability. That perfect combination of form and function can be found at Church Street Floor Coverings. Choose from ceramic tiles for your floor, shower, and backsplash. And glass and metal tiles, just the thing to use as an accent. And the experts at Church Street can help you imagine how it will look in your home. Church Street Floor Coverings will pamper you with the ultimate in personal service and professional advice. Don't throw this at you. Welcome back to Watkins Memorial High School. As you get a good look there at the Barons huddle, they'll be in the visiting brown trimmed in white with gold. The Warriors will be on the home whites trimmed in black and gold. And Jerry, as we alluded to prior to the break, Buckeye Valley comes in eight and one, lost their opener to Hamilton Township, 74-76, had a chance to talk to Coach Barrett before the game, said they had their chances there, but then have reeled off eight straight. Warriors started with three losses, one, two in the middle, beating Lakewood and Liberty back to back and have since lost four in a row. Any feel for what we might get here tonight? Well, you know, anytime you play a game, uh, all the teams have an equal chance, and uh, we can look at records and uh, look at the Ontangi game, but uh, just like uh, last night, you know, the underdog sometimes comes out on top. <laughs> Referring obviously to the Fiesta Bowl, or the the BCS championship game as we go with the starters first from Buckeye Valley. Number two is Ross Heath. Ross is a six foot one inch junior on the season. Ross Heath averages 11.2 points per game. Other starters, number three is Kevin Frolic. Kevin averages just over five points a game. Scott Thomas, number 10, averages 20.2 points a game. A six footer, six foot six inch player that also leads the team in three-pointers with 21 this year. Kyle Jones is number 23. Jones averages 3.1 points a game. Number 44, rounding out the starting five for the Barons, is Doug Kasberg. Doug averages just over 14 points per game. Starters for the home Warriors include number 10, Ben Adams. Ben, a six-foot, one-inch senior. Ben averaging 13.8 points per game, leading the Warriors. Matt Casto, number 12. A six foot one inch junior, Matt averaging a bucket a game. Another junior in the backcourt, number 22 is Casey Weber. Casey averages just over eight points per game. With him in the backcourt will be number 24, Rakeem Hall. Rakeem, a senior, averages nine, point, nine points per game. And rounding out the starting five, senior postman, number 44, standing six foot two, Kevin Phipps. Kevin on the season 
is averaging less than a point a game, but will be the presence in the middle, the, the, the size factor that Buckeye Valley is going to enjoy, the, the size advantage that Buckeye Valley is going to enjoy, will be tested by the Warriors' ability to box out on the boards. It's something they've yeah. not been great at, and they'll have to get better at it tonight if they're going to pull this out. Well, that's the only way you can come at the height you got to block out. They've got 6'6", six, 264, six, 6'7". Six, Eric uh, Wall, I believe, is the 6'4 freshman. And they have one gentleman that's 6'7", but does not play very much. Tip goes to Buckeye Valley, controlled out top. Warriors in a box and one, it looks like. Casey Weber's denying Scott Thomas. Scott averaging the 20 points per game. He'll get pick after pick. As you see the shot go, no box out there. Rebound number 44, Kasberg puts it up. Now Adams clears the boards and quickly head to Hall. Hall has his shot altered by Ross Heath. And here come the Barons. Kyle Jones running the point quickly in the corner. Jump shot from about 12 feet. Kevin Frolick won't go. Rebound taken down by Scott Thomas. His shot won't fall. Ben Adams down with his second board of the game. Adams left-handed to the foul line. Matt Castro in the corner. He can shoot from there. Can't find the range on that one. Rebound pulled down by Kasberg. Stripped away by Rakeem Hall. First points of the game go to the Warriors. Rakeem Hall. This is a nice steal. Watkins still in a, a box and one, if you will, with the chaser. Into the middle of the lane goes Adam, or Thomas, beg your pardon. He puts it up and in. Now some pressure full court as Weber looks for help, finds Hall across the timeline. Hall tripped up there. Foul will go on Heath Ross Heath. That'll be his first. 6.40 six to play as we go to replay. Watch right here as Hall gets his feet tangled up yep. with Heath. Ross Heath, I'm going to kill that all night long, folks. I'm sorry. Ross Heath, one team foul for the Barons. As Hall looking for help, gives it off to Adams, top of the key. Weber on the wing, drives baseline, flips it into Phipps and has it tipped away. First turnover of the game for the Warriors. Still a box and one. Weber chasing Scott Thomas. Thomas with the ball now on the wing. Skip pass in the corner to Ross Heath. He's checked by Rakeem Hall. Kasberg in the corner goes baseline, is nudged, and is going to be called for stepping on the end line. Kevin Phipps, the Warriors number 44, did a nice job there of yeah. taking away the baseline. I, th I thought he missed this one at first, but he finally got it right. So, oh, my goodness. There it is. His foot's on the line. 2-2, early going here from Watkins Memorial. And ben Adams' pass is picked off by Scott Thomas. And there will be a Warrior foul. I believe it'll go on Casey Weber, and it does. That's his first team first. Inbounding the ball is Ross Heath. He gets it in to Kyle Jones. Thomas from the wing, three ball won't go, rebound by Kasberg. Another three-pointer by Ross Heath, and Heath finds the range, 5-2 Barons. A little bit of a trap, press defense applied by the Barons. Watkins gets through it, 17-footer by Weber, short, rebound by Kasberg. Amidst the hands, he gives it off to Thomas. Thomas down the other end, gives off to Frolic. Frolic's jumper won't go. Nice tip by Scott Thomas. And head coach Ross Todd Phillips had seen enough. He takes a timeout, a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here. And that's Jerry Ben's part of the problem for this two and seven Warrior team. They just can't compete on the boards. It's not a lack of effort, it's frankly a lack of size. Warrington at 6 1, Kevin Phipps at 6 1 and a half. If you stretch them, yeah. it's just tough to compete on the boards without being excellent in your fundamental box out. Yeah, well, that's the only way you can get, compete against the height. You know, uh, it, the height advantage is, just means a lot down under there. 
Well, you can't teach tall. No. You, <laughs> you can tall. teach a kid to box out. Yeah. Yeah, that's where they have to learn to hustle and, uh, you know, just make that extra effort. And it's key for the Warriors tonight to keep this close early. Yeah. Because, yeah. frankly, if not, it could get out of hand. 1-3-1 one, one zone press, it looks like, against the Warriors. And Weber and Adams break it. In the corner goes to Casto. Casto had Phipps in the corner, alluded to keep it. Adams, 15-footer. Nice shot, Ben Adams. Ben's the leading scorer, averaging just under 14 points a game. But he's been in a bit of a slump lately having games of six, nine, and six in the Warriors' last three. Mm. Swing to the corner, that's Kyle Jones. His three finds the range, 10-4 Barron. Four and a half minutes to play, first quarter here from Watkins Memorial High School. Middle's open. Penetrating dish, nice job. Adams to Phipps up and in. Right. Kevin Phipps, the senior. Two points. Quickly the other way, a little bit of an alley-oop. Won't go, foul underneath. Casper gets the rebound. Yeah, see who he calls it on. They see him getting the rebound here. Going back nice up. job of, Casberg's really been Done a yeoman's job. That's a foul on Ben Adams. His first team second. Casberg goes to the line for two. Misses the first. Now into the game for the Warriors. Number 34, Justin Warrington, a junior. Six foot, one and a half, maybe two. He'll spell Kevin Phipps. And in for Buckeye Valley is Andre Princehorn. He'll wear number 33. Second one won't go. Warrington gets the rebound. Weber quickly across midcourt. Gives it off to Adams. Adams has space. Gives it to Hall in the corner. Shot won't go. Tip, tipped again. And Princehorn down with the rebound. Quickly here comes Ross Heat the other way. Bounce pass underneath the Princehorn. And yep. travel call. Nice defense there by Justin Warrington to close off the lane. And Princehorn... Ran into him and was called for steps. Yeah, he, he was in good position there. And uh, if he had gone any farther, he'd had a uh, player control foul. Adams now loses the handle, gives it off to Weber, back to Adams. Nice job on the press offense by the Warriors. Adams now again looking, has Weber top of the key. Weber checked by the man-to-man -man defense employed by Buckeye Valley. He's guarded by Kyle Jones inside to Casto. Casto can't find a range. Rebound Scott Thomas. This kid's a nice player. Six foot six. He can go the length of the floor. He's going to be called for steps there. You don't usually see a kid that size. 21 threes leads the team. Averages 20 games. Had two games of 33 as you watch a six yeah, foot six Scott Thomas run the floor and dish. Yeah. But before he could get rid of the ball, he's called for steps. You just don't see a kid that size that can do all those things typically. Right, he's, he's got some good uh, athletic abilities there. Ball gets away from Weber. Quickly the other way goes Heath. Thomas, oh. nice pass underneath. Nice job but by Doug Kasberg making himself available, but a better job by Scott Thomas finding the open man. 12-6, Barron's on top, and Matt Castor is going to be called out of bounds. Buckeye Valley substitution. Kyle Jones heads to the bench, and in him, for him is number 20. That's Justin Lee. Lee, a 5'10 guard for the Barons. Coach Barrett. Now Watkins in a 3-2 zone. Got to know where the shooters are here. Prince Horn. No, beg your pardon, that's Casper. Casper and Princehorn were in the same spot. That'll be the third team foul. The bucket will count, and the foul will go against Matt Casto. Take a look at it here on the replay as Casto almost got screened by Princehorn, but Casper able to get the ball finished and draw the contact from Matt Casto. Matt's first, team's third. Yep, he's 0 for 2 from the line. See what he does here. 
Oh, misses badly there. Yep. Anthony Marsh, no, beg your pardon. That's not a great decision. No. Nice job, Matt though. Castro, pulling the, pulling that one out for the Warriors. As Weber gets it to Castro, Castro drills the jumper, and that's going to be Ben Adams' second foul as he comes over the shoulder of Andre Princehorn. Take okay. a look here. Late getting there, and he just goes through the left shoulder right there of yeah. Princehorn. That's not a good foul. Fourth go. team foul on the Warriors, second. On Adams. So into the game now comes Paul Leach and Rob Deaton for the Warriors. Weber and Adams take a seat. Scott Thomas back into the game for Buckeye Valley. Quickly launches a three from the baseline corner. It's good. Seven points for him. 17-8. Minute 48 to go. First quarter. Hall down. To, gives it to Warrington. Three ball won't go. Not his shot. Not where you look for him to shoot. Rebound taken down by Heath. He gives it up quickly. The Barons head the other direction. Lee to Heath. Back on the left wing. Won't go. Kasberg, another rebound. Now taken down by Warrington. He fires it ahead to Casto. Tempo's picked up. Casto draws contact, and it should be a blocking foul on Ross Heath. It's his second. Take a look here as Casto takes it right to the bucket. A good decision by him. Yep. Now he needs to get that shot airborne, or at least attempt the shot to draw the two free throws. Yeah, it was, it was a nice drive, and, and, and instead of driving into the man, he kind of went off to the side, and that's why he got the block call. Castro tries to force it into Rakeem Hall. Nothing there. Well defended by Kevin Frolic. Looking, looking, not much. Gets it into Paul Leach. Leach. Faces the bucket, backs, takes his back to it, gives it to Deaton, back inside to Leach. Leach, little spin move, won't go. Paul gets his rebound, has it knocked out of his hands. It'll be Warrior ball. On the floor for the Warriors, you have number 12, Matt Castro, 40, Paul Leach, four is Rob Deaton, 34 is Justin Warrington, and with the ball is Rakeem Hall. He goes down left side of the lane, little runner is good. Rakeem Hall, that's four for Rakeem. 17-10, Buckeye Valley on top as we approach one minute to play here in the first quarter from Watkins Memorial High School. Entry pass, little three-man game as Kevin Frolic's shot won't go. Loose ball, Frolic picks it up, kicks it back out top to Kyle Jones. In the corner, that's Thomas, three won't go, rattles in and out. Rebound by Deaton. Deaton has it poked away. Nicely done that time by Kevin Frolic. Now forcing a shot up and in. You can't do that. <clears throat> they tried to call timeout as he's going out of bounds there, but the uh, official didn't see him, and so it's going to be out to the Warriors. Well, I know they changed it in college, and I'll be very honest. I don't know if they did it in high school. You can no longer be airborne and call that timeout like kids were used to do. Yeah. Or were used to doing, I should say. Leach has it stripped away by Thomas. He can't get it to fall. Rebound put back up by Frolic. It won't go, but he does draw the contact and the foul. Looks like the foul is going to be whistled on Justin Warrington. Be his first, team's fifth. Now watch all this. That's just poor right there. You got to be strong with the ball. And then Thomas, nice acrobatic move, won't fall. But watch Frolic underneath. Right there. Yep. Just a working man. That's all they're doing. They're just outworking the Warriors on the boards. Yeah, they've they've got to be a little more intense and uh, hustle in there and block out. Block out. Beg your pardon. That's number five, not number three. That's Chris Farenholtz. Isn't it? Or is that a three? No, that's a three. It's is that a three? The number yeah. threw me because they're of a different. Font. Farron Holtz yeah. is in the game though, number five. As Frolic cashes one of two on the free throws. Hall in a trap out top, needs help, gets it from Casto. Barron's now picking up the man to man intensity some 30 feet on the floor. 12 seconds on the first quarter clock as Hall has it poked away. Gives it up to Deaton. Leach, four seconds. Not the kid you want taking the last shot. Casto, get it up. 
Uh, and his shot won't go, but he does draw contact, and I believe he'll get the foul. And that'll be two shots. See right here, as Metcasto goes to the bucket, right that's about the buzzer, and he yeah. draws contact and a foul. Scott Thomas and, and foul. Scott Thomas picks up his first third team foul that's as Casto shoots two. That's Scott's second foul. Oh, they had him at one on the board. Okay. Well, and Matt I drains them both. So with a timeout on the floor, we'll take a short break as well. This is Time Warner High School Basketball. At Park National Bank, we don't make decisions in some big corner office or meeting room out of town. We make them right around the corner, quickly and fairly. We offer everything other banks do, like direct deposit, electronic banking, and customized loans. But as a strong community bank, we do it with uncommon flexibility and dedication. We're large enough to serve you, small enough to know you, and fast enough to keep up with you. If you're ready for your business to start, grow, expand, or thrive, come on Park National Bank. Today's students want a high-tech education with wireless access on a friendly and community-driven campus. Central Ohio Technical College is the solution. We offer high-tech degree and certificate programs, including sales and marketing, digital media design, radiology, forensic science, and many more. And COTC is one of Ohio's fastest-growing colleges. Call Central Ohio Technical College today or visit cotc.edu with several area locations. Good look there. Two little inquisitive girls. They could care less. Somebody's <laughs> playing basketball. They're having fun. Yeah. Don't fall. <laughs> you know, hey, Chris, you know, I just noticed on this, uh, the Warriors come down on that 1-3-1 one, one, uh, full court press. I, I, I've not watched them play, but it seems like that shot on the side, if they had anybody at all could shoot that shot, is, is open. Casto can shoot it. Adams can shoot it as the Warriors inbounds to start the second half. For the Warriors, it's Hall. Warrington, Weber, Leach, and Casto. Casto seems to be pretty good from that corner right there. That's kind of his shot as he takes a runner. Oh, nice shot by Matt Casto. Matt with four, his season high is six. Watkins now gonna have to pick up the defensive intensity. Skip pass, cross court. Back across the court to Kyle Jones. Three ball won't go. Top of the backboard. That'll be out of bounds. For the Barons on the floor to start second quarter, you got Scott Thomas, Justin Lee, Kevin Frolic. I believe 44 is, yeah, that's 44, Casberg. Yep. And then 23 is Kyle Jones. Hall quickly the other way. Casto into Warrington. Skip past the Hall. Gets contact. No call. Rebound by Kasberg. Here comes Scott Thomas. Thomas goes to the wing and then some. Gets the ball back into Kasberg. Goes baseline. Thomas, little runner, bounces in and out. Boy, Kasberg has absolutely out. been phenomenal. Yep. He has to have half a dozen rebounds, and we just started the second quarter. As Weber gets greedy, that goes <laughs> through the hands of Hall. That'll be turnover for the Warriors. Okay, yeah, Kasberg has uh, six points, and I'm sure most of them are down underneath there. Watch this block out. There's nobody there. He just lays it in. Just does such a great job of being where the ball's going to come off. He reads it so well. Kasberg, same place, like Groundhog Day. Nice give by Thomas. Nice Thomas' shot's blocked by Weber. Weber gets the loose ball, heads the other way. Nice feed to Leach. Leach can't finish. Rebound taken down by Justin Lee. Quickly, Justin crosses the timeline. Okay. Into the lane goes Frolic. Frolic has it stripped away. And Leach will take a seat. Kevin Phipps comes in for him. We're starting to see a little lead creep out here, Chris. And, and the Warriors have got to they got to keep it down. Six-point bulge, 20 to 14, six minutes to play as Kasberg takes a lob inside from Thomas and is able to convert. 22-14, Casto in the corner, gets relief from Hall. Weber opposite side of the floor, 
Has the ball tipped away. Boy, they're nice defense. And the other way goes Kyle Jones. He's fouled by Phipps. You have to value the possession of the basketball. As you see right there, yeah, he's a really steal. nice job by Kyle Jones. Yeah, it's a good job taking the basket, going up strong, and didn't quite make it there, so but he got the foul. Jones will go to the line, shoot two. Misses the first. Well, when you don't rebound well, possession is absolutely well, you, you, you critical. Hold, you got to hold I mean, the ball. You know, uh, you're going to have mistakes. You're going to have turnovers. Uh -huh. You're going to have those kinds of things. But you have got to make, you have to maximize the majority of your possessions. I mean, they're undersized and outmanned most nights, and the Warriors can't afford a lot of mistakes. Right. You, you don't get many chances at the offense, so there's another one. Yep. Another turnover. Thomas down the lane, hops, stops, pops, and gets at the drop. Warriors now on the short end of a 25-14 run. 5-0 runs enough for Coach Phillips to call a timeout. As you can see, once again, Weber likes to go to that left side and has yet to execute it. He's been stripped the last two trips, and they've both led the points for Buckeye Valley. We'll be back after these words from our sponsors. For all your insurance needs, contact a local Licking County area good neighbor State Farm agent. Welcome back to Watkins Memorial High School and the Warriors who were down 20 to 14 now find themselves on the short end of an 11 point ball just the Barons have reeled off five straight and uh, Two of those buckets or two of those trips have come as a result of the Warrior turnovers. I'm not going to belabor the point, but they have to take better care of the basketball. Hall now in for Weber. So you have Hall, Phipps, Warrington, Adams, and Casta. This is really as big as the Warriors can be without Paul Leachat being added to the lineup. And for Buckeye Valley coming out of the timeout, it's Thomas, Princehorn, Kastberg, as Adams goes into the lane and finds it. Ben Adams closes the gap to nine. And out in the backcourt you have Kyle Jones. And there's Kevin Frolic. Frolic, Warriors now, not sure what kind of defensive are in there. At first I thought it was a bit of a man-to-man. -man. Jones scored two points there. Kyle Jones. Adams left hands it down the lane. Nice feed to Hall. Hall can't get it to drop, but does draw the foul on Casper. His first. That was a good drive. He took it into the big guy and uh, just went up strong. Here it comes. Pass off the side. Good job right there. He just went right in there. Too bad it didn't fall. Hall shoots a pair. On the season, Rakeem 21 of 27 from the charity stripe. Good look there at Coach Donovan Barrett. Talked to Coach before the game, said he had some concerns coming into the season because he only had one starter back. But certainly those questions have been answered to this point because they're eight and one. And there with the three pointer from the corner is nicely done by Kyle Jones. Lead up to 13. Adams looking for help. Finds Casto in the corner. Casto's three-pointer won't go. Fips the rebound. Gets it to fall and draws the foul on Princehorn. So Kevin Phipps with the bucket has a chance to tie his season high with three by converting this free throw. Okay, now he's in position to get the rebound. He's right there. And the guy comes over and gets him on the, on the shot. First on Princehorn, fifth on the Barons. Phipps' free throw won't fall. Kasberg, of course, with the rebound. Thomas with the ball. 
You know, the thing that's impressive, he uses both hands well. He can go either way, right or left. Yep. And he probably needs to get stronger. A little slightly built, but you can tell the kids live, played a lot of basketball. Warriors in a man-to-man. -man. Nice job there. Oh, boy. Thomas got away with one as Casto gets the rebound. Backs it in. Warrington can't handle it. Didn't seem to be at all ready for that pass. Thomas, good feed to Princehorn. Princehorn shot won't go. Rebound Phipps, and he'll be <laughs> fouled by Kevin Frolic. That'll be six apiece on the team fouls as we take a look again. You can see right here is a nice feed. Princehorn just can't finish in the face of Adams' defense, and then that was just a silly foul by Frolic as yeah. Phipps had rebound position. That's two fouls on Prince Horn. No, beg your pardon. They're going to say Kevin Frolic now. Yeah, it was number three. That's, that's well, they're going to get it right here. <coughs> it, it was number three. That's why I thought on the replay. Yeah, there's his signal to him now. Take a look yep. here at the tail end. You'll see Thomas's pass to Princehorn, and then there's Phipps. Right there. Yeah, it's clearly Frolic with the foul. They got it right. Hall and Adams now running the backcourt. That's Adams, pump fake, gets another call Ooh. on Frolic. That'll send the Warriors to the line with 3.30 to go here in the first half for the bonus, a one and one. And I think that's his third foul. That's what I've got him for. Nobody at the scorer's table <laughs> yet. Yeah, the scoreboard. It's got to be a second because he just got one. Yeah, so yeah no, I, I've got him for three. Minimal. Well, Adams goes to the line this season. He's 25 of 31 from the charity stripe. Converts the first. That makes it a 10-point game. Chance to cut it to nine. And he does. 30-21, three and a half minutes to play. Thomas. That's Casper. Boy, they do just such a nice job of looking for each other. That's a travel. <laughs> Didn't get called. Kyle Jones back outside. Scott Thomas. Oh, what a great feed. What a great feed from Thomas to Casper, and Casper finishes. Yeah, he had his eyes open and uh, hit the open man right under the bucket. Warriors come the other way. That's Casto from deep water, and he finds the range. That's that shot I was telling you about, if they could get it to the corner. 32-23. Kasberg, Thomas down the lane. Little runner falls up short. Kasberg with the rebound. Knocked away by Hall, and it goes off the knee of Kasberg. So it'll be Warrior ball. It's another thing for an undersized team to do. When the ball comes below the shoulders, your hand's right there. Perfect. There yep. You young kids at home, they were short like I was. You have to look for the big guy that'll pull it down to your height, and when you do, the hands get busy. Hall did a real nice job against the much taller Kasberg in that particular instance. Barron's employing a man-to-man -man defense. Backdoor cut, Hall gets it to fall. 32-25 now, Warriors making a move. Picking up pressure, three-quarter court. Looks like a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Thomas down the middle, splits it. Won't go too strong, and Adams with the rebound. No reason to be in a hurry here. Just like that. Where are you going? Thomas checked by Hall. Phipps now. Providing assistance. Oh, you don't want to leave your man. Casto, nice job there. A help defense in the corner. That's a three ball from Justin Lee. Won't go. Kasberg with the rebound. Won't go. Gets his own rebound and again finishes. 
Young man just brings his lunch pail to work and does his job. I mean, he's been a rebounding machine here in this first half. Lead back up to nine with a minute 19 to go here first half. Adams pounds it to the floor down the lane, gives it to Casto in the corner. Casto goes baseline, gives it to Warrington. Warrington shot, gets the roll. At the one minute mark here in the first half, 34-27, closer than I anticipated to be honest. Justin Lee checked by Castro in the corner. Nice hands again by Rakeem Hall to strip Scott Thomas. And that's where maybe a kid like Rakeem, who's obviously physically much stronger than Thomas, can, go, can be a better defender against a kid like Thomas because he can use that strength to move him a little more. Watch right here. Yep. Again, kids, look at the ball. Where's the ball? It's right there by the belt buckle, and Hall once again makes him pay. Yeah, he's got those quick hands. He gets in there and gets that ball out of there. Weber back in the game, Paul Leach, Deaton all check in. Robbie Deaton there wearing number four. He's charged with guarding Justin Lee, Thomas, Kasberg, Jones, Lee, and Fahrenholtz for the Barons. Watkins in a man-to-man -man defense. Thomas with the ball. Barron's just content to work for the last shot. Now with the ball is Kyle Jones. There's the man they want with the ball. And that's Thomas. Thomas, 15-footer, dishes it off to Lee. Lee from the corner, gets it to fall. Oh, what? well executed there by the Barons to stretch the advantage to 37-27 as we head into the break. We'll be back after these words from our sponsors with some halftime stats. Don't go away, anyone. This is Time Warner High School Sports. Hi, this is Rick Houston from Houston Plumbing and Heating, your authorized Bryant dealer. We've been keeping families in Licking County and the surrounding area warm for over 40 years, and we're ready to come to your home today. A combination heating and cooling system from the dependable folks at Bryant. Here at Houston Plumbing and Heating, we service all makes and models. So give us a call for 24-hour emergency service at 763-3961. Houston Plumbing and Heating in Bryant, a name you know with a name you can trust. When it's time to put your foot down, why not put it down on real hardwood flooring? At Church Street Floor Coverings, your feet will be beside themselves with joy. Church Street has pre-finished oak, hickory, cherry, and maple floors to choose from in nailed, glued, and floating styles. And our experts can help you imagine how it will look in your home. Amazing area rugs add the perfect finishing touch. If you don't see exactly what you want, they'll get it. Church Street Floor Coverings. Don't try to sit you. Need a speaker? Call the Licking Memorial Health System's Speakers Bureau, sponsored by the Community Relations Committee of the Licking Memorial Development Council. The Speakers Bureau provides a variety of programs, such as sports, nutrition, medicine, diseases, treatment, and preventative medicine. For more information, call 740-348-4000 or visit our website at lmhealth.org. Every business needs a bank. May we suggest choosing one that takes your success personally? We offer the most competitive products and services available, but we do it with the personal attention every business deserves. The hand you shake and the eyes you look into belong to the person responsible for taking care of you. We're reliable, accountable, dedicated, and we're in it for the long haul with you. If you're ready for your business to start, grow, expand, or thrive, count on Park National Bank. Welcome back to Watkins Memorial as the teams begin to get ready for the third quarter. Let's take a look at that last shot that the Barons converted. Again, it's Thomas, and he's done this so effectively throughout the first half. Finds the open man, which in that case was Justin Lee, and Lee buries it with one second to play to make the score 37-27. And that's the way we stand at halftime. Jerry, how about some individual numbers? Anything in particular stand out? Well, the uh, 
high point uh, man for uh, the Warriors, uh, Matt Castle, has eight points. On the other side, Casberg, number 44, has 12. He's the big guy that's cleaning up on the boards there. And, you know, Kid's a lot nickname of, ought to be Windex, the yeah. way he cleans those windows. A lot of easy points. And, uh, you know, the Warriors are behind by 10. It's not insurmountable, but they're going to have to, uh, as we talked during the first half, take better care of the ball and uh, block out a little more. The thing I like about Thomas, I mean, this kid's coming off two games of 28 points the last two games against Northmore and Marion Pleasants. Had 28 in each of them. Tonight he's got nine at the half but I'll bet he's got a half dozen assists. I mean, he shares the ball very well. His high point for the year was 33. He had that in the first two games of the season. Casto establishing a career high on the varsity level. His high was six against New Albany. Yeah, well, um, I think, uh, like you said, the one kid has to get a little stronger. He is his little light and little looks like he's not as strong as he should be, but he does a good job of getting the ball where it needs to be. He certainly has good vision. Into the lane, Weber tries to draw the charge. Thomas gets the bucket, no call, as Weber hits the deck, and now the Warriors bring it up down 12 against the press of Buckeye Valley. Buckeye Valley and Watkins have met four times. The Barons claiming all four wins as Casto, he's on fire, That's the kid's shot. on fire. 11 for Matt Casto, his second three of the night. And that's also that shot on the side. I keep telling you that if they could just get it kicked out to somebody, it's there. There's a three ball from the wing, won't go. Thomas over the back of Weber gets the tip, but is whistled for the foul. Nice job that time, or a better job by KC getting the box out and making Thomas climb his back to get the rebound and the tip. Watch it right here. They just run that little wheel move over the top. The shot goes. Thomas goes back to the bucket. Beg your pardon, that was Kevin Phipps in there who got the box out. Now with numbers, Hall to Phipps, Phipps up yeah. and in. Much better spacing by the Warrior offense here in the early going. It's a nice run. 39-32, just started the third quarter. Barron's on top of the Warriors from Watkins Memorial High School. It looks like they're back in that box and one. Now Weber's gonna guard Thomas all over the floor. 6-6 six, six against 6-1. Six, if they go inside, it's a mismatch. As you see, that now Thomas doing the smart thing, trying to post up. Weber following him everywhere. Baseline move. Thomas, runner, won't go. Gets his own rebound. Shot won't fall. They're going to say the foul is on the floor. I think it's going to be Phipps. It's going to be on Kevin Phipps. Here's the replay. Take a look there, Casey trying to draw a charge, can't get it, and Thomas over the top of Phipps there, and his putback won't go, and they whistle Phipps for his second foul. Each team with one here in the second half. Skip pass, back to Heath in the corner, and a nice shot again by Kyle Jones. Kyle Jones now with 12. Casto in the corner, back to Adams on the wing. Weber out top, directing traffic. He's checked there by Kyle Jones. Give to Hall. Hall spins to his left. Little runner in the lane is good by Rakeem Hall. 42-34, Warriors down eight. Hall, Casto, Weber, Adams, and Phipps start the second half for the Warriors. This is Thomas inside, goes to his left, gives it again off to Kyle Jones. This time it won't fall, rebound Ben Adams. Quickly down the floor, it goes to Rakeem Hall. He's left-handed, and he takes it up the left side. Many, many players will wait for that right hand to come in there. Oh, and quickly the other way. Oh, my goodness, right. Frolic can't get the shot to fall. It laid on the back of the rim and comes off to Ben Adams. Barron's in a man-to-man. -man. Weber goes to the left side, hands off to Casto, can't handle it, and quickly the other way goes Frolic. For, oh, that's a travel. My goodness, it was no call. They got a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here as you see Coach Phillips pleading his case like a bad attorney. Okay, here's the replay. Pivot foot's right there. One, two. <laughs> Come <laughs> I on, think man. He traveled. LeBron James can get away with that, not Kevin Frolic. 
44-36. Jerry, one thing I've noticed is better shot selection, better ball handling by the Warriors. They're blocking out a little bit, too. And they're getting they're a little more busy on the board. Of course, the turnover there led to the layup by Frolic. Yeah. Watch right here. Watch the steps. This oh, is no, this Hall. Is yeah. Watch him here. Thomas looking to block it, but Hall being a natural left-hander did such a good job of keeping his body between Thomas and the ball, and Thomas can ill afford to get that third foul. Yeah, that, that was uh, an excellent layup. He did everything perfect there. Weber gives up to Hall. Hall checked by Thomas. Hall down the middle to Weber. Weber looking, goes to the foul line, gives off to Casto. Back to Weber on the point. Weber down the left side, gets it off the foot of Kasberg. Should have been a kick, no call. Thomas in the wing to Ross. Heath and Heath buries it. Did they give him three on that one? And they're going to have Todd Phillips wants a timeout. He'll take a full timeout. He did give him a three. Okay. And it's 47 36. We'll take a short break as well. This is Time Warner basketball. Who, who, who made that shot? Earn a degree of distinction from our respected university. No need to travel far. Become a Buckeye at the Ohio State University at Newark and start working toward your dream career. Choose from any of Ohio State's prestigious programs. Several programs can be completed at OSU Newark, including the Bachelor's in Business and the Master's in Education. Ohio State Newark is close and convenient with flexible classes to suit your schedule. Degrees of distinction. Call today or visit newark.osu.edu. If your flooring is boring but your budget is stretched, consider laminates and vinyl from Church Street Floor Coverings. They're economical, easy to care for, and tough. Armstrong's Tough Guard can make your new vinyl floor even tougher. And the experts at Church Street can help you imagine how it will look in your home. Laminates and vinyl are the easy choice for today's lifestyle and easy on the budget. Choose your favorite at Church Street Floor Coverings. Don't try to sit you. Barron's lead back to 11. Warriors inbound the ball. Hall, this side of the timeline. Handoff goes to Weber. Weber on top of the circle to Adams. Adams kicks to Casto. Casto, quick jump shot. Matt Casto is on fire. 13 in the game. Yep. Warriors down nine. Just under four minutes to play. Third quarter. Thomas. Stops, pops, won't go. Rebound taken down there by Ross Heath. He gets it back into Frolic, back to Heath, and Heath hits the three. Boy, nice little two-man game there by Heath and Frolic. Barron still in a man-to-man. -man. Hall takes the jump shot. Front iron won't go. Thomas the rebound. Barron's have numbers. A four-on-two break. Kasberg up and in on the layoff. Leading out of 14, 52-38. Every time the Warriors cut it to nine, the Barons make a run. Adams takes it down off the glass. Nice athletic move by Ben Adams. Heath gives off to Frolic. Frolic in the corner, back to Heath. Three ball by Heath, back iron won't go. Rebound, Kasberg taken down by Phipps. And a foul's gonna be whistled against Buckeye Valley. It'll be on Kasberg. That'll be two on Kasberg, two on the Barons. As you see right here, once again, Adams goes down the lane. Very athletic move to the left side of the hoop and puts it in. Yeah, he showed a lot of muscle in that. He, he just took it right to the hoop. Adams inbounds to Weber. Weber being checked closely by Kyle Jones, full court. Weber gives it back to Adams. Back to Weber. Barron's playing a full court man. Weber goes baseline, gives it to Casto. Casto to Adams, Weber's three, won't go. Rebound, Kasberg. Kasberg takes the dive. Oh, that's a travel. No call. Hall tips it away momentarily from Kyle Jones. 
Thomas looked to drive, cut off there by Weber. He'll take the ball back from Jones. He goes behind the back, down the lane, looking, and through the hands of Chris Fahrenholtz, and it'll be Warrior ball. On the floor for the Barons right now. Look, here's that one that he gets the rebound. He falls to the floor without dribbling. That's traveling. There's Boy, a long three that time by Thomas. It won't go. Rebound Hall as you take a look at that. And Jerry would know because he's an official. Weber takes a dive as the ball is intercepted and then tipped away by Adams. Adams quickly the other way. Takes the pass from Hall, and he can't finish. Yeah, Thomas kind of intimidated him a little bit there at the end. Warriors won a 30-second timeout. Uh, it looks like an injury. For some, some reason, the official called timeout there. Well, Weber's limping off. The trainer's kind of talking to him. I think he's favoring that right ankle. Deaton in for Weber. He's playing good defense against Justin Lee. Justin Warrington guards Casberg. Casto, nice defense against Heath. Ball's loose. Barons keep it. Heath on the wing to Fahrenholtz. He's checked by Rakeem Hall. That's Thomas, top of the key. Gets Adams on a hip. He's going to be called for steps. He drugged that pivot foot. Well, they've done a good job on Thomas this half. He only scored two points, so he's not doing what he did the first half quite as bad. I wouldn't be surprised to see Hall take it right at him. Just see if he can't get that next foul. Yeah. Adams, Deaton. Ooh, we got away with one there. So. <laughs> Warrington in the corner. Gives off to Adams. Jerry, I'm not a big fan of the handoff in basketball because it makes two defenders right there in your presence. Oh, what a shot by Hall. Won't fall, but he gets the rebound and then has it taken away by Fahrenholtz. Yeah, you, you, you got a, you, two defenders with two guys, and it's, I mean, it's just such a close situation. Too many things can happen, in my opinion. Fahrenholtz, top of the key, gives off to Justin Lee. That's Scott Thomas, checked by Ben Adams, back to Lee. Fahrenholtz. Turn around in the lane, gives it off to Thomas. Three seconds. Three-pointer from Heath, top of the key. It's good. And twice at the end of quarters, Buckeye Valley's executed at the perfection to get the three ball. Watch it once again, and it stems right there from Scott Thomas. Thomas yep. He draws the defense into the lane and then finds the open man and once again, the Barons make him play. 55-40 as we enter the fourth. We'll be back. One of these can be the most dangerous tools you can own. Because if you're careless, even for a minute, this can come into contact with those. Then it's lights out. At the Energy Cooperative, nothing is more important than the safety of our members. We can't do it all. The best way to be safe around outdoor power lines, just don't touch them, ever. The first rule of every do-it-yourselfer should be do it safely. Warriors inbound the ball to open the fourth quarter. End of the game for the first time is Richie Mock, number 32. He hands off to Ben Adams. Adams, Adams, Mock, Weber, Deaton, Warrington, and Weber for the Warriors. Adams three blocked nicely by Ross Heath. Quickly the other way, he goes right into the defense of Ben Adams and draws the foul. Boy, what a nice athletic play that time by Ross Heath. Good look at Ross right there. 
yep. able to get the block and the loose ball and draw contact. Watch him right here as he goes to the left side. Once again, keeping his body between the defender and the ball, and he draws contact. Third foul on Adams. Heath misses the front end of that two-shot foul as Deaton leaves. Rakeem Hall comes back into the game for Rob Deaton. Hall has four points in the game. Heath converts the second. Beg your pardon, Rakeem has 11 Another points. Three, yeah. mm -hmm. Mock gives up to Weber. Weber thought about the three, gives it up to Hall. Hall at the foul line goes to the corner. Warrington to Hall. As I said, these teams have met four times. Buckeye Valley claiming all four as Warrington bags a three. Now Watkins applying a press. Down 13. Prince Horn with the ball, and Coach Donovan Barrett wants a timeout. It's a full timeout. We're going to take a timeout as well. Let's watch this replay here. As Weber to Warrington, and Warrington, the left-hander, bags a three, his first of the year. We'll be back after these words. Remax Edge is proud to be a sponsor of Lincoln County's high school sports. So remember, if you are buying or selling property, give Remax Edge a call today. That's Remax Edge, selling homes for you. Call 928-3343 or 928-EDGE. Less than seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Little guy likes those keys. Yeah. Gets a little older, he'll want the ones of the metal variety. <laughs> he's like my grandson. He already knows how to get the key in ignition and, uh, oh. and turn it. You know, he's only four years old, so. Luckily, he can't reach the pedals. Right. <laughs> he loves cars. Barron's inbound the ball. Up 13, 56-43, 6.56 to play. Lee, Thomas, Frolic, Kasberg, Princehorn, and saving it from going out of bounds is Justin Lee as he takes a timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. Take a look here on the replay as Frolic, boy, and tight roping the sideline there and getting the timeout before he falls out of bounds. A nice heads-up play by Justin Lee. As I said earlier, Buckeye Valley's one off for of the meetings between these two teams. The last meeting was just last year, a six point win by the Barons. Last meeting on this floor was 50-47, an overtime decision back in 04-05. Each of the games have been close other than the matchup in 02-03 when the Barons won by 15. Thomas to inbound to Lee. Richie Mock on him now. That's a better matchup. Mock a better defender, a little more active. Frolic off his foot into the corner. Tries to lob inside nice. to Kasberg, and he can't come up with it. Weber comes away with the loose ball. Thomas checks him, top of the key. Adams thought about the three, goes into the lane, lets it fly, and it falls, Ben Adams. 56-45, Warriors still pressing, looking to get back into this one. Frolic to Lee. Good look there at Frolic. Now the Barons looking to run some clock. Ball's dead. Thomas bails out Lee, and he kicks it cross court to Frolic. Frolic bounces it in to Kasberg, who has it knocked away, but it goes out of bounds off of Rakeem Hall. Take a look here, this bounce pass. 
Nice defensive hands that time, I believe. I believe it was Warrington. I could be wrong, but it looked like Justin was on the back side yeah. of that post up. Yeah. You know, uh, Warriors only have two fouls, and I think they're going to have to start getting a little more aggressive and see if the officials are calling anything, you know, try to steal that ball. Kyle Jones with the ball just checked in. A nice pass back side block to Princehorn for two. Weber goes down the lane, kicks it off to Mock. Mock to Adams. Adams to Weber. Weber to Hall. Hall looking inside the Warrington, has it stolen, but Weber gets it back. Adams open for the three, lets it fly, won't go. Warrington, nice rebound, the put back by Justin Warrington. Lead is back to 11 for the Barons. Kasberg, Kyle Jones, and Heath with the ball. That's going to be a foul on Richie Mock on Thomas, but as you said, Jerry, just Three team fouls now, first on Mock. And I'll tell you one thing, they need to foul them just to get to the bonus because all the things that Buckeye Valley's done well, one of them has not been free throw shooting. Right, right. Nice try for a steal there. But Thomas dishes off once again. Prince Horn from Thomas mm. up and in. Good play. Quickly the other way, Hall from Weber. Hall goes down the lane, up and under, won't fall, but he does draw the foul, I believe, on Princehorn. Great play here. Look at this Hall, little shake and bake down the lane, up and under. You can see yeah. right there with the right arm, Princehorn Great takes chance. Hall in the forehead. They called that on Kyle Jones. Yeah, that's that's, that's what, what they, they marked the it down there. as, but I think it was supposed to be 33. Well, there's no question. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be 33, but they gave it to 23. Paul makes the first. And buries the second. Lead again for Buckeye Valley at 11. Heath gives it up to Thomas. Thomas now with numbers. He goes down the lane, has it blocked by Adams. Adams corrals the rebound and draws the foul. It'll go on Chris Fahrenholtz. Nice job this time defensively by Ben Adams, just anticipating. And Thomas, one thing I've noticed about him, he likes to fade away instead of going into the defender drawing the contact. Weber gives off the haul. No, beg your pardon. Faked it. He'll take it all the way to the hoop and gets the bucket, Rakeem Hall. Long pass to Ross Heath. Heath down the middle gives off to Fahrenholt, he has it blocked by Adams. Warrington the rebound outlet to Weber. Weber to Adams, Adams. Spins in the lane, kicks it off to Casto. Oh my goodness, way downtown, oh. Matt Casto. 16 points for him too. The lead to six. Thomas to Fahrenholt. He's in no man's land, kicks it back out top. Casper back to Jones, out top to Ross Heath. And then Thomas. Warriors have to maintain the defensive intensity here. As Buckeye Valley coach Donovan Barrett has seen it up. He'll take a timeout. We'll take a short break with three minutes left. 60-54 Barons. Don't go away. We've got a good one brewing. Since ancient times, Tile has been celebrated for its beauty and durability. That perfect combination of form and function can be found at Church Street Floor Coverings. Choose from ceramic tiles for your floor, shower, and backsplash. And glass and metal tiles, just the thing to use as an accent. And the experts at Church Street can help you imagine how it will look in your home. Church Street Floor Coverings will pamper you with the ultimate in personal service and professional advice. 
Tell him Charlie sent you. Take a look here, the feet of Matt Caster. The line's 19, oh. he's at least 25 feet out. Yeah. Nothing but net. Matt Casto having a career night here with 16 points. And the Warriors, who were down 11, have reeled off five straight to cut the deficit to six. Well, once again, you know, if the Warriors want to keep getting back in, they got to play more aggressive defense because they haven't called the fouls. Uh, get some good shots. Buckeye Valley, on the other hand, they got to try to take a little time off the clock and hope to get a layup or something that uh, – it's a higher percentage shot. And at one point, they're going to have to put him on the line unless they can keep twiddling this deficit. Thomas takes the inbounds pass, looks to go baseline, cut off by Adams. Weber on Jones, hand off to Adams. Thomas, I'm sorry. Thomas, Thomas down yeah. the lane, gives it off to Kasberg. It goes off his foot and out of bounds. Ball goes to the Warriors. A little bit of pressure. Warriors break it with no problem. Weber goes baseline off the glass, up and in. First points of the night for KC Weber. Cuts the deficit to four. That was a great drive. Well, they, they used to that handoff. Thomas in the corner. It goes to Frolic. Frolic. No, won't go. Rebound. Adams up and in. Beg your pardon. Thomas. Thomas. It was Thomas, yep. Foul. We'll have to wait and see. I believe it's on Ben Adams. It is. That's his fourth. They've run this play right here. The Warriors where the handoff comes. KC, the Warrior quarterback, fakes the handoff and keeps it and goes all the way to the bucket for the layup. You know, Buckeye Valley moved their defense out and it left the bottom right open. He, once he got around, it he, he was there, he, he had that layup. Thomas on the line for one to complete the three-point play. And that was only a second basket this half. Much, much better job of defense by the Warriors on Scott Thomas. Weber takes the pass, oh, throws it away into the hands of Frolic. Thomas goes baseline off the glass and in. Boy, that's a nice move there. Weber comes out of the trap by giving it up to Adams. Minute 45, Warriors down nine. Barron's now on a 5-0 run. Weber's three, won't go. Rebound tipped about, but Thomas with the rebound is fouled by Warrington. Take a look here. He was square, just front edge, won't go. Thomas, the rebound, and you can see the contact with the body. Watkins again employing the press. Thomas with the ball, checked by Casto. Watkins has got a foul here, and they will. They've got one more to give, that'll be on Matt Casto. <laughs> One twenty-one to play, 50, 65, 56. Timeout on the floor, a full timeout. Down nine, the Warriors take a timeout. We'll take a break as well. This is Time Warner High School Basketball. At Park National Bank, we don't make decisions in some big corner office or meeting room out of town. We make them right around the corner, quickly and fairly. We offer everything other banks do, like direct deposit, electronic banking, and customized loans. But as a strong community bank, we do it with uncommon flexibility and dedication. We're large enough to serve you, small enough to know you, and fast enough to keep up with you. If you're ready for your business to start, grow, expand, or thrive, come on Park National Bank. Today's students want a high-tech education with wireless access on a friendly and community-driven campus. Central Ohio Technical College is the solution. We offer high-tech degree and certificate programs including sales and marketing, digital media design, radiology, 
forensic science, and many more. And COTC is one of Ohio's fastest growing colleges. Call Central Ohio Technical College today or visit cotc.edu with several area locations. Good look at the crow's nest high above the Warrior Gym. Well, Jerry, right now you got to foul right away, don't you? Oh, yeah. And, and I don't know that you want to foul Thomas, but you have to foul right away. There's a, right there. He got it. And Matt's going to foul. That'll be the third on Matt Casto. That'll send Kyle Jones to the line for a one and one with a minute 15 left, and the Barons up nine. The critical thing here is you've got Casberg and Thomas on the lane for the Barons. That you've got to box them out. Yeah. Uh, and you know, Scott Thomas, uh, all this half has been driving lane addition off, and I wonder why he wasn't shooting. And in crunch time, when Watkins made that run, he's made uh, two quick baskets and a foul shot. So he's the go-to man, and, and I was a little surprised that he was dishing off as much as he was at, uh, earlier in the second half. Jones makes the first, misses the second, and just as we said, Warrington <laughs> went for the basketball instead of the box out. And Kasberg with another rebound. Casto going to be whistled again for a foul. Ross Heath will go to the line for a one and one, and that'll be four fouls on Matt Casto. And a good look there at Matt. Really, at this point on this night, he's the last guy you want to leave the floor. He's got 16 points. Yeah, I would think so. He's, he's hit several three-pointers, and uh, they need to get somebody else fouling. Rebound that time on the miss. Yep. Matt dribbled the Casto dribbled the ball on the baseline, and that'll be out of bounds. Barron's ball. Inbound to Thomas. Thomas is fouled. Looks like Rakeem Hall is going to draw the contact. That'll send Thomas to the line for two. Just under one minute to play here. First foul on Hall, ninth on the Warriors. So the next one will send the Barons to the line in a two-shot foul situation. Thomas makes the first. It was 60-56 at one point. The Barons have now scored eight straight. Inbound goes to Adams. Adams gives up to Hall. Hall to Warrington. Back to Adams. Adams goes to the bucket for two. That'll be a foul on Weber with 46 seconds on the clock. To the line will go Kyle Jones. Take a look here, nice job by Adams as he splits the defenders and gets the easy layup. Yeah, he went strong to the basket, and, uh, had a little lane there, got right in there. 12 points now for Ben Adams. Kyle Jones will shoot two free throws as the Warriors are now on the double bonus. He has 13 on the night, pending the second charity toss. And he makes the second. Weber hurries up the floor, gives off to Adams. Adams corrals the ball, gives it to Warrington. Warrington's three, off back iron, won't go. And the ball is out of bounds. It's going to go off of Justin Lee. It'll stay Warrior ball. Down 12. Weber to Adams, Adams down the lane, up and under, won't go. Foul is called, I believe that'll be Thomas. And it is. Take a look here as Adams again splits the defense, switches it over to his left hand. He can't get the shot to fall, but he does draw the contact and misses the first free throw.
And comes up short on the second one. The rebound tipped out by Weber, but into the hands of awaiting Justin Lee, who's promptly fouled by Weber. Lee with three points in the game. Rattles in the first. Barron's now five for five from the stripe here in the final minute. Been on 11 to two run since the Warriors closed the gap to four. Second one won't go, Hall the rebound. Weber, three ball, short, won't go. Rebound taken down by Heath and with 12 seconds left. That should just about do it from Watkins Memorial High School as the clock now ticks down inside of five seconds. And the horn sounds and Buckeye Valley escapes with a hard fought, albeit 13 point win, 71-58 over the Watkins Memorial Warriors, Buckeye Valley with the win moves to nine and one. Their next outing will be Thursday night against Elgin at home. The Barons are six and zero oh in Mid-Ohio Athletic Conference play and sit comfortably atop the league race. Watkins Memorial now falls to two and eight. They travel to Franklin Heights for a Friday night encounter with the Falcons. The Warriors one and four and OCC Capital play. Hope to right the ship against the Falcons. Watkins now lo losers of five in a row, while Buckeye Valley stretches their win streak to nine. We'll be back with some post-game statistics right after this timeout. For all your insurance needs, contact a local Licking County area good neighbor State Farm agent. Hi, this is Rick Houston from Houston Plumbing and Heating, your authorized Bryant dealer. We've been keeping families in Licking County and the surrounding area warm for over 40 years, and we're ready to come to your home today. A combination heating and cooling system from the dependable folks at Bryant. Here at Houston Plumbing and Heating, we service all makes and models. So give us a call for 24-hour emergency service at 763-3961. Houston Plumbing and Heating and Bryant, a name you know with a name you can trust. When it's time to put your foot down, why not put it down on real hardwood flooring? At Church Street Floor Coverings, your feet will be beside themselves with joy. Church Street has pre-finished oak, hickory, cherry, and maple floors to choose from in nailed, glued, and floating styles. And our experts can help you imagine how it will look in your home. Amazing area rugs add the perfect finishing touch. If you don't see exactly what you want, they'll get it. Church Street Floor Coverings. Don't try to sit you. Uh, good look at a contented fan right there. Oh, yeah, I met him. I guess he's a, the, the gym rat here. Uh. <laughs> Athletic director's son. Oh, is that who this? From Watkins okay. Memorial. Well, Buckeye Valley saw their 11-point lead shrink to four late in the fourth quarter, 60-56. But from that point, the Barons reeled off an 11-2 run to ice this one. 71-58. As I said, the Barons move to 9 and 1. The Warriors go at 2 and 8 as they both reach the midway point of this 2006-2007 season. And Jerry, just like you said, Scott Thomas really held in check early, but when it got down to crunch time, when that lead went to 4, he really took over and asserted himself. Yeah, he was a go-to man. He uh, he looked really good. Uh, uh, he's I think he's going to be a hard person to stop because he can pass the ball off get it to an open man or he can make the shot. And when you need him, he's gonna get in there, it looks like to me. And he had, he was three for three from the stripe down the end. And when he wasn't scoring, I thought 
really to his credit, he did such a good job of handling the ball under pressure. I mean, at 6'6", he's able to see over most defenses at this level. Yeah. And he was able to dish the ball. I mean, I was really impressed. Obviously, the kid can score. He comes in averaging 20 a game. But the, his ability to pass was very impressive to me. Yeah. Uh, what I, do you got for scoring? Well, uh, Scott Thomas was the uh, leading scorer for uh, Buckeye Valley. He had 18, so it was a couple under his average there. But but it, he led four guys in double figures. That's yeah. another thing well, that got, Buckeye Valley has done. They've been had very good balance. Yeah, Jones and Casper with 14, and Heath with 12. He had four three points, five three points, four three point shots. And then uh, over on the Warriors side, uh, Rockheem Hall was the top man with 15. No, M Matt Castle had 16, and Rockheem had 15. Ben Adams finished with 12, just below his average. So the Warriors placed three in double figures. But when it came down to it, they had the foul. And, and Buckeye Valley did a very good job of finishing. Yeah. I mean, it could have gone either way when it was 60-56. But they put the hands in the big man, Scott Thomas, ball in the hands of the big man, and, and he delivered. Whether it was an assist, a free throw, or a bucket, Scott Thomas was able to pull it out on the board. And you have to give a hats off to Kasberg. Doug Kasberg, for my money, was absolutely outstanding on the boards from the opening tip to the final buzzer. He really dominated the glass for he, Buckeye Valley. He was in there, yeah. I want to thank everybody that made the broadcast possible tonight, all the guys in the truck, Ed Jobes and Steve Hall on the cameras here at Watkins Memorial High School. Final score once again, Buckeye Valley 71, Watkins Memorial 58. And Jerry Wheeler, I want to thank you for all your commentary and help here tonight. For Chris Weber, for Time Warner Sports, wishing you all a good day. Good day, everyone. Welcome to the campus of Newark High School, the Jimmy Allen Gymnasium. The Time Warner Sports is bringing you the Newark High Wildcats against the Westland Cougars. I'm Tim Powell with Coach Tim Mercer, and we should have a very athletic game here tonight. The Westland Cougars come in with a one and one record, an opening season loss to Dublin Jerome, and a win, a league win in the OCC against Gahanna last week. The Wildcats. Coach Tim is on a roll, 4-0. They played a few games under their belt and a very athletic squad, both these teams. Yeah, we uh, should have a pretty fast-paced game. And, uh, you know, I think that favors a little bit, but I think we also need to be able to, when we have to, slow it down in the half-court area and use our height to advantage. Well, the Wildcats come in with a distinct height advantage, so I'm sure the Cougars are going to want to sprint that height up and down the floor a few times to wear, wear these big boys out. Right, and I look for them to probably do some type of half-court trap or something if uh, they're not getting anything off the full court just to speed things up in the half-court area. Well, like I said, the Cougars come in here with a one-and-one -one record. Uh, last week they did beat the Gahanna Lions in their opening week in the Wildcat in the OCC Ohio, and the Wildcats were at Hilliard-Davidson and was able to literally eke out a win there. I think it was like 47, 43, perhaps, maybe a little different. But again, a real struggle for the Wildcats in a slow-paced game. Right. Talking with uh, some of the parents and some of the players, it was uh, like a no blood, no foul type of game. And, uh, you know, we hung in there and uh, came away with a victory. So you got to like that. Typical Davidson. Typical OCC. Yeah, exactly. 
For the Wildcats, we got Corey Thomason in the circle, Greg Avery, Kendall Stinson around the perimeter, Dane Kopp, and Cody Dennison as the starters. Tips controlled by Nort. That's Cody Dennison with the ball. For the Westland Cougars, the starting lineups number three, Sidney Hill, Demarcus Jackson, Aaron Mickens, Casey Wendell, and Garrett Davis. As you would expect, both very athletic. They're going to a man to man. Stinson with the drive and short jumper and gets the put back. Right down the court with a left-handed hook. That was very creative. Demarcus Jackson. Avery kicks it out. That's Stinson looking down in. Got to step out on Avery. He'll take it. Cop down in the blocks, and he was assaulted in there. So the clock will stop. This one's tied at two. As you can see there on the scoreboard, our Time Warner scoreboard. I like that. Very nice. Dane in the paint, turnaround, partially blocked. Cody Dennison comes out of there with it. Aaron Mickens on the block for the Cougars. Thomas and double teamed to oh, kick over to Kendall. Couldn't get it to go. Here come the Cougars. Dennison steps in front. Thomason, short. Going back the other way. Some of those beginning of the game jittered a little, you know, trying to get in the flow of things here. Got to work up a sweat and then it'll all come together. That's Stinson checking number 15 Jackson out front. That's Casey Wendell, kicks it over. Perimeter jumper for three, three, no good. Tipped away by Avery. And here come the Wildcats. That's Stinson on the break. Gives it up to Thomas and the turnaround. No, not there. Casey Wendell sprinting down the floor. Gives it up to Jackson. Good defense from Dennison. Great play there. From the elbow, Aaron Mickens with the field goal. Underneath, kicked out of bounds. Ball will go to White. 4-2 Cougars over the Wildcats. This one just underway, 546 left in the ball game. I'm Tim Powell with Tim Mercer. You know, that, that's the one thing I can ever understand. You know, I watch the college players, so they never can keep their shirt tails tucked in. It's it drives never, me nuts. They never want to, Coach. Avery with a three in and out. Here come the Cougars. Wendell with the left hand, the jumper at the elbow. No. Avery on the board. Oh, the wow. creative lay in by Cody Dennison. He's a handful when he wants to get in there and score. He just kind of, somehow he knows how to shade, use his body to shade the defenders from getting it blocked. And tonight, I hope we see that uh, runner of his. <laughs> that running floater, man, that is, a, that is the greatest shot. That's a classic. Cop in the blocks. Thomason on the board, tipped away. Here come the Cougars once again. This one's knotted at four. When it, that's Sidney Hill dips it off the corner to Jackson in and out, tipped around. Sidney Hill blocked by Cop. Neither team shooting effectively right now. Timeout by Newark, 32nd. 5:06. The game's knotted at fours. These kids need to blow. The pace is fast and furious at the beginning. No warm-up time here. Well, and I think. Coach Quackenbush seems like he's a little uh, unhappy with their half court execution and uh, you know maybe not even getting back on defense fast enough. So he'll get that corrected and uh, you know, it's a good timeout right there. Kind of get everybody, get their wits together and kind of slow down a little bit. Let's get under control and play what we're capable of doing. 
Uh, we were talking before the game started, and I told you I liked the way what I liked what Coach Quackenbush was doing with this squad. He's got some really fine athletes, and they go about eight deep, and he's just rolling them out on the floor and telling them to go play. Yep. And, and that's the best thing you can do with a team of athletes. Just let them run. And that makes practice really good also, because if you want to take a day off of practice or in a game, somebody's going to take your spot. Speaking of athletes, Stinson got a hand on that one. Jackson with a tr tray. Couldn't seal him off. There he got it. Went off Jackson, going to Newark. I got both teams at two and seven from the field, Coach. Yeah, that's good defense, what that causes. Cody Dennison, one of the best ball handlers in Central Ohio, bar none. He's only a sophomore. And there hits, it is. Hits the J from 18. Might have got away at the charge there to, be, to get open. Hill trying to go baseline. Goes crossover. There's a travel. A Stinson tied him up high. I'll tell you, Kendall's one of my all-time favorites. I love to watch him play. He's just all over the court going 100%, and he does all the things. It's hard to get kids to do, and that's play defense and anticipate, move his feet. Well, he, and he's going to create a lot of offense off his defense. Backdoor, Avery gets inside, gets it up, tipped by Thomason, no. Boy, we had a group of white shirts in there and couldn't get it done. Yep. You got to make those layups or grab the rebound instead of trying to tip it. And when you're in a, underneath the basket with a lot of people around, you want to grab it and then put it back up. Nobody around you, go ahead and tip it. 6 4 Wildcats. 4 10 left in this one. Off the foot of Mickens. Jackson recovers, gets it up. Dane tipped it. Kendall brought it down, finds Avery on the other side for the lay-in. Wow. Pay attention, folks. You're going to miss something. That's right. <laughs> I can't look down to put the score down, and there's going to be something on the other end. Davis looking for some help. Decides to shoot it. Thomason in on the rebound. 8-4 Newark. Stinson letting it set up. Takes his tray. He had all day. Good look. Up in the air. Stenson. Oh, what a Stinson. pass. you got to be kidding me. And on the way down, spotted the open man. Kendall Stenson with the rebound and assist. All in the same jump. Unbelievable. 317 left in the first period. 10 to 4 Newark. We'll be right back. Every business needs a bank. May we suggest choosing one that takes your success personally? We offer the most competitive products and services available, but we do it with the personal attention every business deserves. The hand you shake and the eyes you look into belong to the person responsible for taking care of you. We're reliable, accountable, dedicated, and we're in it for the long haul with you. If you're ready for your business to start, grow, expand, or thrive, count on Park National Bank. Kendall Stenson getting a blow right now. Mark Thomas into the ball game for the Wildcats. He's on the ball, number three. And believe me, you don't lose any quickness. I was going to say, we don't lose much, don't lose anything right there. That's, that's nice. Casey Wendell made a move. And they're going to charge Cody Dennison on the reach. Avery with a rebound. We got a push from the backside. The big man, number 55, who just reported in, Barrett Brooks, on the personal. Coach Todd Parker recognized his rebounding deficiencies in a hurry, didn't he? Yes, he did. Thomason. Cats very deliberate in their work in the way ball over the inbounds line. This one's tipped away. Errant pass. Moved it ahead. Jackson ends up with it and some tall timber stripped away by Avery on the backside. 
Dennison's going to slow it down, set it up. Avery looking down to Corey Thomason. Turn around, move in, in and out. Corey, he missed it another one. Hunt Mark Thomas ends up with the ball, and he's pushed to the floor. Cats had this problem at Technical Hilliard. on a coach. Coach Todd Parker gets the big T. So Mark Thomas will get to the free throw line to shoot his on the shot. That's the first free throw attempt for the Wildcats here in the game. Missed them both. Cody Dennison will get a shot at it now. He'll be shooting the technical. And after all this is done, we get the ball. Yes. You know, as an ex-coach, I, I understand the frustration, but when the, the guy in the stripes tells you that's enough, then it's enough. I mean, you can still be upset and don't agree with what transpired, but then you got to be, you, you can't say anything else. You got to learn when to close it. There we got one. So we got four shots. We got one in. It's 11 to 4, Newark, and we get the ball out. And during the timeout, Raylan Watson checks into the game. Another burner. Came in for Greg, didn't he? Yes. Thomas kicks it out. Raylan doesn't take it. Looks down deep. To nice cop. catch. Sidney Hill knocks it out of his hands. Belongs to the Wildcats. 2:01 left in the first period. 11-4 Cats. Cody pulling the trigger. Watson doesn't take it. Back to Dennison. Into the lane. There's, There's your player. runner. He drops it. He doesn't miss that shot. Jackson bringing the ball up for the Cougars. Mark Thomas on him. Sidney Hill looking to score. Puts it up hard. Thomason on the rebound. Dennison. The colleges are looking at that as a point of emphasis, so are the high schools, and I think it's a good call. I mean, a lot of uh, players are getting away with carrying the ball like that. I'll and tell that's you, a, you're right. The last five, six, seven years, it has really been uh, an overlooked call by a lot of officials. And that's a distinct advantage for the ball handler when you can do that. Jackson to Hill. Cop steps out. Wendell back to Hill. Cats in a man to man. Casey Wendell from the key. Rebound to Cop. Kendall Stinson back in the game. Went left hand on a crossover. Avery picks That's up a loose, a loose ball. ball. Or was it an assist for Kendall? You can't tell. <laughs> 49 seconds left in the first period of timeout on the floor. 30 second timeout. We got a 30 second timeout to bring you these important messages from Time Warner. For all your insurance needs, contact a local Licking County area good neighbor State Farm agent. 
Welcome back to the Jimmy. Jimmy Allen Gymnasium on the campus of Newark High School. The Westland Cougars against the Newark Wildcats and the Cats on top 15 to four. We're in the closing seconds of the first period, 49 seconds left. Newark's still in a man-to-man. -man. This game was tied at four at one time and the Cats have run off 11 unanswered. Mickens down on the block, the turnaround. Get a personal on. Kendall Stinson, number 20, going to reach. Number 21, Aaron Mickens, a senior, 6-4 for the Cougars. Aaron's got the first one. First free throw attempt for you the know, Cougars. You know, for as fast as the game's been going up and down the court, we've only had six fouls on, you know, total. So that's pretty good. Mickens hits pay dirt at the free throw line, 15 to six. Avery quickly up court. Stinson with the crossover to the lay-in. No good. Cop on the putback. He's good got Good rebound. It. Good take to the basket by Kendall, and Dane's right there. His man went over to help. Casey Wendell at the top of the key. Corey Thomason on him. McKenzie with the ball. Stinson covering. Wendell for the three. He's got it. 17-9. Cats on top. Under five seconds. Shot in there. Watson had a good look. The end of the first period, Newark 17, Westland 9. I'm Tim Powell with Tim Mercer. We will be right back after these messages from Time Warner. When it's time to put your foot down, why not put it down on real hardwood flooring? At Church Street Floor Coverings, your feet will be beside themselves with joy. Church Street has pre-finished oak, hickory, cherry, and maple floors to choose from in nailed, glued, and floating styles. And our experts can help you imagine how it will look in your home. Amazing area rugs add the perfect finishing touch. If you don't see exactly what you want, they'll get it. Church Street Floor Coverings. Don't try to set you. Need a speaker? Call the Licking Memorial Health System's Speakers Bureau, sponsored by the Community Relations Committee of the Licking Memorial Development Council. The Speakers Bureau provides a variety of programs, such as sports, nutrition, medicine, diseases, treatment, and preventative medicine. For more information, call 740-348-4000 or visit our website at lmhealth.org. We're back on the campus of Newark High School. The second period just getting underway. Time Warner Sports is right here for your high school athletics. I'm Tim Powell with Coach Tim Mercer. And that's the Cougars. Demarcus Jackson with a nice pass to the free throw line and Aaron Mickens knows what to do with it. We came out a little bit of a half court trap there. Just changed up the defense, quarter break. Weston's got a different press on, 2-2-1. Ball rotates into corner. Stenson takes it baseline. The finger roll. I don't know if you've noticed, but he plays with his mouthpiece half in and half out. <laughs> I don't think that uh, meets dental requirements, does it? No. No, it does not. Wendell into the free throw line. Mickens again with another good look, and he's got it. It's a deuce. Aaron Mickens with a nice looking jumper. This time he kicks it back out. Avery hard off the rim. Here come the Cougars, 19-13, they trail. That's Davis at the top. Dennison on him. Thomason reaches in, takes it away, kicks it out to Cody. And he's oh. fouled on the lay and Watson did everything he could to keep him out of there. Yes, a nice job. Keep a body on him. Westwood foul against number 23, Casey Wendell. His first, team's fifth. Second period just underway, 641 left. 
Good shot of Cody. We got Newark with a six point lead, 19 13. Dennison has been to the free throw line once before. He was one for two. He'll be shooting two once again. Number 22, Cody Dennison, 5'9", sophomore. Started about 13, 14 games last year for the Wildcats as a freshman. Yeah, so that, that, that Division game experience. Division one, OCC, Ohio Division. You don't see many freshmen no. playing in this league. And if you do, not to the extreme of the point guard. Cougars quickly up court, no trouble breaking the press. Davis goes baseline, the eight foot, the six foot jumper. Thomas comes out of there with it strong. He kicks it up. It's tip, no call. Jackson. Davis with a free look. Got it. Watson to Thomason. Double team. Good Watson. cut, good pass. You can't stand in the game of basketball. You've got the pass and cut move. Jackson trying to find a lane. He, what he found was Corey Thomas. <laughs> Watson with a look down court. Cody runs it down, uses a pick, and the runner drops silky smooth Corey Dennison. I'll tell you, the sophomore just thrives in this wide open game. Sidney Hill taking it into the key hard. He got the runner to go. He kind of ducked his head and went on that one. Avery to Thomas. Watson. Cody gets the ball, takes a look back at Coach Quackenbush, sets up the offense. 5.05 left in the first half. Thomason in the blocks, tries to get it up. Right there was an example of what we were talking about before the game about, you know, you're going fast, going fast, and all of a sudden you can stop it, run your half-court offense, execute like that, and that's that's what you got to be able to do. you got to play it. Change it up. The speed that they're going to allow you to play at. If they're going to allow you to go good, fine. If they're going to allow you to play half-court, let's play half-court, and what we do, we take it inside. Corey misses the front one. There's the foul on Tom Corey Thomason. Nothing shy about that one, as Aaron Mickens came right across the top. Corey Thomason, a senior, already committed to Ashland. Got the second one. Dane Kopp into the ball game. We keep rotating them in like that, we'll stay fresh. Jackson. He has the ability to penetrate. Get you up off, the, off your feet, good, good ball fake. Number 15, Demarcus Jackson, a junior. Left-hander up, no good. He'll get a couple. His team's trailing by nine, 26-17. Both teams a little cold at the foul line, about like what the temperature is in the gym here tonight. <laughs> Now the, uh, the levy didn't pass. They're looking to cut a little bit. Sophomore, another sophomore, Dane Kopp with a strong rebound. A softy to a softy. Yep. Here's a half court trap by Westland. Stinson with the high lead to Dane. He didn't get it, but Mark Thomas from the baseline for three. So for the Wildcats, even the mistakes are paying off. Jackson working it. Takes the short baseline jumper, tip, tip, in. 
I think 33 got that one. That was my guess, Anthony Miller. Garrett Davis into the front court after the turnover by the Wildcats. Press paid off there. Jackson comes out and gets the ball. Mark Thomas on in. Jackson. <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> he, I thought he got fouled there, but we'll take the traveling call. Corey's back in the game. I think he came in for Mark Thomas. Back into the full court zone. Stinson in the middle. That's bad news if you're trying to press. <laughs> Kendall felt comfortable. He's got it. You know, I mentioned to you we hadn't shot a three. <laughs> we come out and make a couple here in the second quarter. Stinson got him with his hands out on front. That's Jordan McKenzie that he fouled, number five. Braylon Watson going back in immediately for Stinson. Three thirty-two left in the half. 32-19 Wildcats putting some space between them and the Cougars here in the second quarter. 